So I want to share some more truth about our core uh, or innermost being known as the Merkaba uh, and go deeper into it. Um, the Merkaba, this is the focus point of the rivers of living water, abundant immortal life where spiritual energy is distributed in us. The Merkaba is our access to limitless grace, living light energy. So what is the Merkaba? How do we activate it and use it practically? There's lots of even weirder stuff. And I know some of you might feel this is weird and a bit out there, but there's lots of weird information out there in Internet land. So please use discernment if you're looking up anything about these words. If you research the Merkaba, you'll probably find all sorts of mystical New Age concepts that can obscure the truth with layers of deception because the words may be used are the same, but the actual truth is not the same. The truth is often hidden by deception, which is why we need spiritual discernment. I would not advise delving into Jewish mystical books like the Kabbalah for truth. Jesus is the truth. You don't need to find truth in an old religion which came to an end when Jesus removed the power and when the temple was destroyed. There are many other terms that you'll find, like sacred geometry, the Sephiroth, Metatron's cube, that may be con confusing or enticing, all those things. And I want to encourage you to keep your focus on the Father, on Jesus, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. And as Jesus reveals through the spirit, the spirit of truth. And they will be our guide on this journey of discovery. And always take it back to the Father. Please just don't accept what I'm saying. Take it back to the Father. Get first-hand revelation, not information. I'm giving you the revelation and the experience I have. But for you, this needs to become first-hand experience and revelation that you can enter into. And I think it's really important that you're able to embrace that for yourselves the merkaba is actually and sometimes it's spelled m-e-r-k-b-a and sometimes it has an h on the end it's actually three words not one and often in in hebrew or in greek several words are put together to mean another word and this three words are mer which means a light that rotates within itself ka means spirit referring to the human spirit ba means the physical body, although it could also mean the concept of the reality that the spirit holds. So that's sort of the foundational thing that connects us to the physical reality. Merkaba in Hebrew is used 44 times, and in the Bible that's mostly translated chariot. The word Merkaba means a vehicle in very ancient Hebrew. Some books translate it a vehicle of light, others translate it as chariot or wagon, which is sort of similar terms. The word can be used of physical and spiritual chariots. In Ezekiel 1, 4, 26, Merkaba is referred to as a throne of God, which is said to be a four-wheeled chariot driven by four living creatures, the chaos. Each of these creatures has four wings with the four faces of man, lion, ox, eagle. And those are associated with our nature within the order of Melchizedek, uh, which is a, another whole subject and teaching. Jeremiah 4, 13 says, Behold, he shall come upon them as clouds, his chariot shall be as a whirlwind, his horses are swifter than hippos. That's a translation of the word Merkaba. Isaiah 66, 15, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Now there are three angels described in association with the Merkaba and Ezekiel. The chaos, living creatures, the ophanim, wheels within wheels, and the seraphim, the burning ones. And they also are often connected with the cherubic nature of man, carrying this image of God in the four faces that represent the order of Melchizedek, the lion, ox, eagle, man, or in that sense, the king, the prophetic or, or oracle, the legislator and the priest. And those are four functions that we have within the order of Melchizedek. 1 Chronicles 28, 18 says, for the altar of incense refined gold by weight and gold for the model of the chariot, Merkaba, even the cherubim that spread out their wings 
and cover the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. So the instructions given to build the temple uh, were links to the chariot with the cherubim and the Ark. And there was this whole sort of connection between our position and God's position within his four faces, within his name, within uh, our heavenly position of being in Christ. So Merkaba is the spirit body surrounded by counter rotating fields of light, the wheels within the wheels, spirals of energy which transport spirit body from one dimension to another. And I'll go to, into that a little bit more. The Merkaba can be thought of as the chariot of ascension. In ancient Egypt, that they refer to Merkaba as rotating light that would take the body and the spirit from one world to another. It is portrayed as two equally sized interconnected tetrahedrons of light within a common center uh, where one tetrahedron points up and the other down. And this sort of geometric symmetrical form is called a stellar octangular or a star tetrahedron. And literally it is expressed in one, simply as one triangle pointing up the mountain of the house of the Lord in, in Zion and then there's one where the point goes that way and they overlap and interreact and I was given a really uh, beautiful uh, sort of big sort of scarf I think it sort of is a big big piece of material which represents the Merkaba um, and I was given it at a concert by some friends from Seattle and I had it up pinned up in my office and I've got pictures of it if you can see that picture that is a picture of the Merkaba and the Merkaba in that picture um, is sort of these two triangles interacting, representing heaven and earth, representing our position on earth as sons and God's position in heaven as father, and then interconnected with positions and portals and connecting points. And they go into other sacred geometric shapes. The Metatron's cube is in the middle of it. The sea of, seed of life is in the middle of it. Now, I haven't got time to go into to all of that now um and i wouldn't in, sort of want to deal with that because i think it can become missing the point the point is not so much what it looks like but how it functions and how we can engage it and how we can outwork it practically in our lives to bring about all the energy we need for health and wholeness and life so the merkaba is connected to the energy field of a human being we all have energy fields those energy fields can be with a low frequency that can bring about uh, a less than kind of life and sickness and disease and other things. The Merkaba is connected to our genetic code and development, our eternal identity, because it brings together the eternal with the physical to reveal the reality of who we always were in God. And the Merkaba is connected to the physical body as well as the spiritual. And that is why it's important that we are operating in oneness, in union of spirit, soul and body, so that we can manifest that. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says he has made everything appropriate in its time. He has set eternity in their heart. And I believe God has placed the Merkaba, this interaction, this co convergence of time and eternity within us. To be the point in our innermost being that enables us to connect to the spiritual and physical time and eternity and to be outworking the reality of immortality. I believe that this eternity in our heart is the Merkaba, and I believe it's the place where eternity and time converges in our innermost being, our true origin, the true origin of who we are from God's perspective, the vast sum of the amazing thoughts he had about us, the way we were fearfully and wonderfully made and designed in his image. So the Merkaba is also connected to our state of being, designed to be at rest, which is living in the frequencies of love, joy and peace in a harmonious balance where we are one. Living loved, loving living and living loving, that releases immortal energy it releases life abundant life limitless energy is connected to the balance between body soul and spirit in wholeness in oneness that releases the blessing or the empowerment of immortality 
Immortality is difficult when we're fragmented, broken, divided, and when we're not whole in union of spirit, soul, and body. And there's a work of transformation that God is doing in our lives to reveal the truth of who we are so we can know that union. But it requires a surrender of the soul, the inside out flow from spirit, soul to body and not the outside in from body, soul to spirit. So everything needs to flow from the inside out. Everything needs to flow from our connection point with father son and spirit within us so the structure of the merkaba consists of layers of living light quantum or zero point energy that intertwine around each other in a way that forms a matrix a tight matrix which is seen as this tiny double tetrahedron convergence in our innermost being as it's activated it begins to spin become energized it becomes larger and more spherical in appearance, like it's so spinning so fast in light, you cannot see what it would be if it was still. And that is when it begins to function fully in us. So the Merkaba interacts with the unified quantum field known as the ether and that exists around the body and in all space. Therefore, we can connect to everyone and everything when we're connected this way. When we are one and connected, and this is within us, we are then able to connect to everything because that realm is what holds this realm together. The Merkaba acts as a transducer of zero point energy. That means due to its structure, it is able to extract and bring into the body a lot of energy. Now, I believe that the ability to draw and extract from zero point energy is going to be released that knowledge that truth to the sons of god so we can have an energy source which is limitless to enable us to operate independently of any grid or any other energy and i believe what happens in us is a picture of what will actually happen in all creation and i think i said last time that one sugar cube worth of zero point energy can power 400 billion galaxies which is a lot. So what are the uses of the Merkaba? Safety. The Merkaba is an energy field, a generator. I know it sounds like science fiction, but actually this is what science is discovering. This generates energy that can protect us. This protects us from entities, physical assaults against attacks such as harmful electromagnetic fields, all the stuff that may have a physical effect on our body can be protected when we have a shield around us, generated from within. The second use of the Merkaba is travel. The Merkaba can be used to transport the body or souls and spirit from one place to another. Translation, trans relocation. They're using the energy from within to move us around. Also, the Merkaba can be used for healing and regeneration. The Merkaba is able to help regenerate the soul and the physical body by generating abundant life within. The energy it brings helps with healing. It interacts with the subtle energy fields that we have in a person. And some of these things, you know, they discovered these meridians or fields of energy and flows of energy. And some of the things which would have been seen as quack medicine many years ago would now be accepted as scientific fact and many people are now using that fact with frequency to generate energy which will bring healing and wholeness we are connected to the unified field in a manner which will bring about healing as that field interacts with our field through the merkaba and raises our frequency so we can live in the abundance of life in health and wholeness. Immortality, the healing effects of the Merkaba help prolong life, but connection to that unified quantum field promotes abundant life. We don't want to just not die. We want to live with the abundance of life and energy that will enable us to completely fulfill who we are in our relationship with God. Now, this works through frequencies of intention, focusing love, joy, and peace to bring rest and access to the abundant life energy from within God 
He was within us. And, you know, I've done meditations around rest and learning to draw on that flow, learning to be filled with love, joy and peace. Come to that place of rest. Be still and know how this is flowing and working in us and we can learn to train our senses in it and we looked last time about john 4 a fountain or a well to drink from within us john 7 drinking from jesus the source to have rivers of living water flowing from the core of our being the living energy flows to the merkaba where it is focused and distributed to the seven energy gates to give us limitless energy and life now, the seven energy gates or seals, or I will use the word chakra, and I know that word has got so many negative associations because of its sort of new agey things. It's just a Sanskrit word, which means disk of energy. And there are seven of these uh, energy gates, let's call them, from the top being the crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral and root. And each of them has a function. And what God showed me is that three of them work as a foundation. The crown, which connects us to the heavenly. The heart, which connects us to the realm we live in. And the root, which connects us to the rest of creation. And each of the others is operating when we need, for instance, insight or revelation. When we need to communicate. When we need to create. And when we need to feel. So the seven gates are the crown the top one to know third eye to see therefore to speak to love to act or to create to feel and to be here to be connected to be grounded to be engaged with creation itself each of them has a function and each of those things functions when it needs to produce the energy we need to fulfill what God is calling us to do and who we are on a daily basis. So the Merkaba can be developed or activated by practice to train our senses and to train the abilities that we have by using certain forms of meditation, by intentional focusing of our consciousness, by engaging, by seeing it flow, all of the things I looked at a little bit last time. From rest, energy flows at increasingly powerful rates, activating and energizing spirit, soul, body, and creating a powerful energy field around us that we can choose to generate and activate. Like the picture in Ezekiel of the temple, picture of our body that has within it God's presence, and the flow that comes through the gateways of our body that goes ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep until it's completely flowing. What does it do? It describes bringing salt water, making salt water fresh, bringing life wherever it goes. And that is a description of what our life is intended to be. That we made in the image of God are to produce energy and life wherever we go to bring about a coming together in oneness with creation to bring now about the creation or being set free into the freedom of the glory of the children of god so the merkaba can be developed or enhanced by drawing energy down from heaven drawing it to earth through our body as a gateway through our first love gate through the very presence of father son and spirit in us Conscious, intentional grounding allows flowing of spiritual energy from the river of life into and through the body. And it's both cleansing and energizing. It's a flow of living water, which is designed to bring about the abundance that God intends us to live in. Another purpose for the Merkaba is signaling. The Merkaba connects us to the grace of God the living light within everything that helps us communicate with other people, angelic beings, the creation itself in multiple locations and dimensions, all because we have this in us connection point. The Merkaba can be used as a communication device by the principle of quantum entanglement. My spirit can be anywhere within the universe, anywhere within the dimensions, and I in the soul can be instantly connected to that reality and that information can be communicated to me so i can be also engaging 
there so where my spirit is my soul my conscious awareness can instantly be there because there is no distance or dimension is not an issue with quantum entanglement i am one whether my spirit is in one place and my soul in another my body in another i'm one but i'm together in this place but instantly connected and that means i can instantly be where i am my soul can be where my spirit is now i talked about multiple dimensions and multiple realities and i will go into that much more next time to talk about how we're supposed to be multidimensional beings but the merkaba is part of that now sensitivity is important to develop through practice using the merkaba it will increase a person's sensitivity to different sensations, physical, spiritual, by tuning into frequencies and energy fields. I can sense certain energy fields when I connect to it. I can sense certain energy fields around me. I can, can, I can connect to those energy fields. I can sort of sense what is in the physical and the spiritual realm around me. We can learn to walk into a room and feel and sense the atmosphere we can learn to do these by practice hebrews 5 14 for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil so to discern the source of life and you can learn how to do this and you can learn if the merkaba is active it's going to make us more sensitive Joy is another thing associated with the engaging and activation of the Merkaba, our innermost being. Jesus said that his joy is in us, so our joy can be full. And those who are operating with improved health and higher, higher energy are more likely to be happier people. We live with an attitude of gratitude, generates joyful energy and usually we express it in some positive, helpful way to others or creation. That is what we're designed to do. We're designed to be joy generators, generating it and outworking it, knowing the truth by experience. And I know this can all sound a little bit theoretical, but it's not a theory when you put it into practice and you learn how to focus the energy that God has as abundant rivers of living water flowing. Now, it's also associated with new abilities. Now, these are not new from God's perspective, but they may be new to you. The Merkaba aligned with intentional consciousness choice can catalyze spiritual abilities such as mental telepathy, telekinesis, pre post cognition, creativity, and other abilities that we're made in the image of God to be able to express. These abilities develop with maturity in sonship and with our responsibility when we know who we are, know our identity and our position in God, there will be abilities that are designed for us to operate in, which can be sort of developed by generating the energy that enables us to be able to use those abilities and obviously with wisdom and in love. We don't want to use those things inappropriately. Another use of the Merkaba is broadcasting. This helps individuals and corporate bodies to communicate, to broadcast or radiate energies to others and to other realms and dimensions. And I have reached out from my innermost being to engage people in the spiritual realms. And I've done it in lots of different ways. And I've done it to make connection in the spirit realm, I've made connections, so we engage in the physical realm. I've done it many times. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to do it other than just do it. But then God then showed me that this is what the energy in me enabled me to do when I released it from my innermost being. It was energized within the Merkaba, and that within it has portals that connected me to other realms, dimensions, and particularly to people i was trying to reach and connect with in this realm and our frequency and the frequency of sonship through this broadcasting of this frequency by the merkaba is within us we have multiple portals within that merkaba that are designed to connect to the multiple sort of dimensions of heaven and 
different dimensional realities. And those dimensions are beginning to pick up the frequency of our sonship. And that is why they're looking to connect and communicate because they're looking for help. And we need to ensure that the frequencies that we're broadcasting are frequencies of love, of joy and peace and rest. So we can focus the energy of intentional conscious choice through the portals across dimensions. That is why I can engage just by thinking about it with an angelic being, with the father, with the son, with the spirit, with a, anything that I have connection to within who I am by just choosing to engage through my innermost being. I'm not doing it through my mind. I'm doing it through me being one so that that energy and that thought is a inner thought. It's not an external thought. It's something generated within me when the father releases his heart to me and I know his intentions and purposes. Convergence is another point. The Merkaba is a hub to access energy portals that enables the convergence of the eternal now of God's heart perspective with the positional heavenly governmental position that we're in, in Christ seated to bring a manifestation or manifestation of the as it is in heaven into the physical realm. Because we need to see God's eternal purpose, the now of God in his heart, and then we incubate that within, and that is activated within, and then it's energized within, within the Merkaba, and we are a convergence of time and eternity, heaven and earth, and that manifests through our physical being and who we actually are. Rest is coherence, a measure of the pattern of the heart's rhythm. And there's something, if you look into heart math, which is quite an interesting sort of thing, you'll find that the rhythm of our heart and rest is about coherence, which is independent of the amount of HRV, which is heart rate variability, reflects an orderly, harmonious synchronization among various systems in the body, such as the heart, respiratory system and blood pressure rhythms, so that we're operating in harmony. There are rhythms that our being is designed to live in, and those rhythms are supposed to be harmonious and not in discord. And when they're discordant, they often it's because we're not operating in union as one. Our body might be predominant, our soul might be predominant, but we need our spirit, soul, and body completely in union and oneness and this is what this is designed to be to bring us to a place of health and wholeness and immortality because our whole being is operating in a coherent way in union together so coherence is the state when the heart mind and emotions are in an energetic alignment and cooperation they're at rest we can be at rest in union wholeness and oneness with god ourself others and creation as everything was designed to be one not designed to be separate not designed to ever be apart as we mature in sonship as adam would have done if he'd continued to follow the path of the tree of life to an ascended state we will discover the ability to reconnect to the eternal now state to become non-linear multi-dimensional free from the limitations of time and space Unconditional love will eventually lead to our body being transfigured and our mind renewed into a fully expanded state of conscious awareness, that consciousness, the true knowledge of who we really are. We will live in the full knowledge of our identity as sons of God in a state of rest, which is a state of being and not doing. Everything flows out of rest. We don't need to do things for our identity. Now, we can learn to visualize opening up the gateway of first love, embracing the life energy of love, joy and peace within us as a river of living water, becoming rivers of living water, flowing in us, filling us, flowing through us, encouraging a flow of living spiritual energy in and through us, opening our gateways to the flow, deliberately surrendering to that flow not resisting it, not trying to control it, by flowing with it. Consciously and intentionally 
we can begin to come to that place when we're at one spirit soul and body when we've surrendered our soul when we've been separated and reintegrated and made whole when we're not operating out of sync or out of balance and harmony when we're operating like that we can consciously intentionally activate the energy gates by seeing the wheels within the wheels spinning within our gates creating a powerful flow of life force energy within the body that energizes the Merkaba, activates it from rest like a hydroelectric turbine so that that can be distributed and we can function in all the fullness of our sonship abilities and not the limitations of all the frequencies that we've been lost the ability to operate with light and with sound the ability to engage our choice the frequencies of our conscious choice to be creative ultimately god wants us to ascend to be ascended fathers which are creative beings we are made not just to be co-heirs but co-creators and god has given us the ability to create and a number of times that i have chosen to create something now in the first time i chose to do it well god asked me to do it the father sort of told me to do it i didn't know how to do it so i just let it happen i accepted what the father said and this was birthed from my innermost being and it just came out of me in a creative energy to form a galaxy and i was out on the edge of the universe and god said let your creativity flow now, this was probably back in 2011 12 somewhere around there i had no idea what i was doing but i just responded with a yes and from my innermost being this creative energy just rose up and out of me came this whole creative thing now now i know how to do that then i didn't know how to do it but because i said yes to the father it happened as a forerunning experience of what would happen when i knew how to do it and i've had many many times that that's happened to me i say yes i do it and then much later i discover what happened when i did it so when i released a blue light to call people to sonship into suns arise suns arising i just said i release a blue light now i know how that energy was released from my innermost being and i've done that a number of times and one of the last times when i was asked by um, some guardians within a courtroom within heaven um, to create some more guardians because more were needed i sort of well i didn't resist it but i checked it out with the father because i was a little bit like okay this the father hadn't asked me to do this but you're asking me to do it but i went to the father and the father sort of said well why wouldn't you release creativity in this way so i sort of okay and he then said because he knew i was hesitant he says well you know how to do this it's like what you've done in every other time you've been creative so i engaged my intention aligned to the father's heart with the request that they made and from my innermost being i chose to create a number of guardians and then assigned them to the council of guardians and then they were assigned out to dimensional portals out in the cosmos in different um, constellations and then i engaged with a few other people and we shared i shared that with them and they were like yeah can we do that and yeah they did it and they were much more sort of i guess creative in their way of doing it and they had all these descriptions of what they look like and all the colors and everything else and for me it was almost like no i just want to release this creative energy from within me all of us can do that i am no different than you as a son of god i have within me the creative power of father son and spirit just as you do it just needs focusing through my willingness to say yes and my focusing that intention my choice to create that reality where that forms and all of us are designed 
to be able to use this energy that's within us and focus that energy. When you pray for someone and lay hands on someone to see them healed, where do you think the energy is coming from to do that? From that which comes into the agreement with obviously agreeing with what the Father's doing. And when we engage it, we are generating that energy from the life of God, because it's all from the spirit. It's not me independently of God. It is that river of life that I am refocusing into someone's DNA or into someone's heart or liver or body in a way which releases that energy, that creative energy to heal, to bring them into wholeness. It's the same thing. Now you can just lay hands on them and you can hope for the best. And sometimes that works. You know, it's worked for me when I had no idea what I was doing because God was gracious and merciful. But now I do know what I'm doing. I'm very careful to only do it when I know it's the Father's heart and intention. See, none of the things that we can do are supposed to be party tricks just because we can do them. I only do it when I know it's the Father's heart. Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. So make sure when we're going to operate in these things, we're going to operate in love. We're going to operate in rest. We're going to operate in humility. And we're going to operate out of the Father's heart to only do what we know the Father is showing us to do. And then we're never going to take any glory from ourselves. We're never going to draw attention to us. What the purpose of what we're doing is, is the Father's heart and intention. We're just cooperating and working together with him to bring about his heart's desires through who we are as a creative son of God. And God wants to reveal to you the full power of your creative ability as a son. So you can begin to bring about creation's freedom and restoration. Now, what I've described today, and I know it's been a little bit technical and a little bit. This is the life that I live. I am living in this conscious state of awareness because I've learned to develop these things and operate in these things until I am this. I don't have to think about it anymore. I can just be constantly connected to the Father's heart, constantly flowing with living water, constantly choosing to focus that living water, but instinctively just being. I don't have to, to get up in the morning now and think, okay, which gateways do I need to activate today? Do I need a crown? Do I need the heart? Do I need... No, I just engage the Father's heart and the knowledge infused to me from the Father is not always conscious, but that activates who I am, which is to have as a son all that I need to fulfill everything that I'm called to be and to manifest the fullness of that reality in life. Most of the time, that means I enjoy everyday life. I live in love, joy, and peace. I live loved. I love living. I live loving. That is how, for me, God has asked me to live and express. Now, it's not always easy, and there are people you have to choose to demonstrate that towards. But in reality, if we know that we've been loved unconditionally, then we are empowered to love others unconditionally. Whether we think they deserve it, whether they're nice to us or not, that's not the point. People weren't nice to Jesus, but he still asked the Father to forgive them. Let's make sure we function and live demonstrating unconditional love, demonstrating the reality of unconditional love. It's not just something to have a theory of. We need that heavenly vision. We need that reality of who we are, where we are, seated in heavenly places, to be a channel of unconditional love, living energy to the world in which we live, that we would bring life wherever we go, that we would turn salt water fresh, that we would bring about the restoration of all things in the life that we live. That is our destiny. That is what God has called us to be, who we are as sons of God, that we can express the reality of that love and the power of that love to bring about transformation and change, to really release the love of God through our lives on an everyday basis.
just by being. Just by you being you can bring about change and transformation. If you allow this life and energy to flow through you, to create a field of love around you that will bring and touch people's lives in the world in which we live. I'd encourage you to close your eyes. I'd encourage you just to start breathing slowly. You know, just breathe in slowly. Hold it. Breathe out slowly. Breathing in the very breath of God, the life of God. Focusing your, your thinking on God who is love. Just breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly. And as you're breathing in, let love flow, flow and flow into you. Flow around you. Flow into you. And let it rest upon you so you can be still. Let God love you. And feel and sense the unconditional nature of that love where you can be still and know that he is love. You can be still and know that he is love. Be still and know that he is joy and peace and truth and light and life and limitless grace and triumphant mercy. Stay in that place, just come to a place of rest. It may take a little bit of time sometimes to get yourself comfortable, to slow down your thinking and focus on love. Come to that place of love. And as you're doing that, I'm just going to release some sound. And these frequencies, I want to encourage you to let the frequency and sound of the intention of love touch your physical, emotional and spiritual being. Let this sound go round you and in you and through you generating energy, this frequency. Jesus is knocking on that door within your first love gate. You can picture that door, picture him knocking. Beyond that door is a well. Choose to open the door and drink from the well, from the fountain. It's living water. It's flowing as a frequency and an energy of life. And as it begins to flow, flow with it as it forms a river. Choose to flow with it. As these waves of energy begin to flow within your innermost being, that river flowing through the gateways of your spirit, flowing through your soul, just beginning to converge in the core of your being, the Merkaba, which begins to energize. energy forming, spinning, increasing. Flowing from you, there's rivers of living water, energizing each gate, energizing your crown, your ability to connect to heaven, energizing your spiritual insight, Knowing, truth and revelation. Energizing what you think and what you say. When you speak, speaking with the energy of the voice of God as an oracle. 
energizing your heart, feeling and releasing love, unconditional love. And each of those seven gates, the creativity, feelings deep within your innermost being, the gut instincts, the knowing, energized, connecting you to creation, the root, grounding with that unified quantum field. You're connected, you can become spaghettified, every atom of your being can be connected to creation, feel and sense creation. Feel and sense your sonship touching creation, broadcasting, communicating beyond yourself through those portals within your innermost being. You may want to travel along that portal. You may want to send a message, an intention of love to someone in particular, just focus that intention of love and let it travel through that entanglement you have with someone that you carry in your heart to touch them with love. Limitless energy generated from your innermost being flowing around you creating an energy field, a field of light, a field of love. 